Well, good thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Welcome back to our Mountaintop family and our E-Church family and friends around the world. So glad you took time again out of your Wednesday to spend a few moments with us. I pray that you help us, as you always do, spread the gospel and share this with family and friends and those that need to hear a good encouraging word on tonight. We thank you for tracking with us, you that have been rolling with us through the book of Hosea. We started out in the book of Isaiah, but now we're ending in this second chapter of the book of Hosea and looking at verse, I believe, 19, 20, I'm sorry, down to verse 23. So get your devices out, get your Bibles out, and go to the book of Hosea in the Old Testament, the second chapter, verse 20 to 23. But let's pray before we get started. Father, we bless you tonight. Thank you for your grace. You have, again, allowed us to come into a time of sharing the word. I pray that you would speak life to we, your people, through this vessel of clay. I pray the word become revelatorial, that it become prophetic, that it gives us uh, divine insight to what you're saying to the church in this very hour that we're in. Now, bless us and let this word be rich in our lives tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you again. Come over there to the book of Hosea, the second chapter. I'm going to read that scripture, uh, those scriptures in just in a moment. But I want to open up by just reintroducing you to our thought is the Lord of love, the Lord of love. He is here purposing betrothing himself, uh, not just for a moment. Betrothing means that he is promising or coming into an agreement to marry Israel again. It's the picture of Gomar and Hosea, Hosea and Gomar, that are coming back together, promising God is his love to Israel, and Gomar is promising his love back to, um, um, I'm sorry, Hosea is promising his love back to Gomar. And if we see this marriage that is about to take place, it is after Gomar has repented and learned her lesson by trying to move away from her husband, and he now is taking her back the second time. And this relationship is a picture of ours and the Lord, that he is the God, not only of second chance, but he's a God of many opportunities as we return to him with a pure and open and repentant heart. God of second chances. And he says that this agreement he's going to have with her is going to be forever, uh, forever kind of love. You heard, I think, those lyrics before. Uh, forever love he's going to have with her in righteousness and faithfulness. Again, it's, it's Hosea talking to Gomar, and God is speaking to Israel. It's going to be a forever, forever righteous and faithful love. God renews this covenant with Israel, and he renews it in these wedding vows, wedding vows. Look at the beautiful language in Hosea, the second chapter, verse 20 uh, to 23. I'm going to read this from the New Living Translation. And the wedding vows go like this. And watch the I will. I will be faithful to you and make you mine. And you will uh, finally know me as the Lord. In that day, I will, I will answer, says the Lord. I will answer the sky as it pleads for clouds. And the sky will answer the earth with rain. In verse 22 of Hosea 2. Then the earth will answer the thirsty cries of the grain and the grapevines and the olive trees, and they, and they, in their, they in turn will answer Jezreel, God's plants. Verse 23 of Hosea 2, And at that time I will plant a crop in Israel and raise them for myself. I will love, I will show love to those I called not love, and to those I called not my people, I will say, now you are my people, and you will reply, you are my God. If you've been in, at a wedding or been uh, or gotten married, you remember the language of will you, will you, I will, I do, I will. Here's the language of a commitment, a promise, I promise, or I will. And in these verses, you hear a lot of the Lord saying, I will. He is the Lord of love as the husband in the marriage ceremony repeats to the bride, the wife-to-be, and the minister is asking, will you have her? Will you have him? And the answer, I will, I do, I will. And the promise is in the I will. And in verse 23, again, he says, I will plant a crop in Israel and raise them for myself, my God. 
and I will show love to those I called not loved and to those I called not my people. I will, he says in verse 23 of Hosea 2, I will say, now you are my people. And they will reply, you are my God. Tonight, I pray as we move in this lesson that you and I will come deeper in our love and relationship to not only know that he is promising his faithful love to us, but we will also in turn promise our faithful love to him and say, Lord, you are my God. The Lord of love, he takes nobodies and make them somebodies with God. I know that's bad country language, <laughs> but he takes nobody and makes them somebodies in God. His promise here in this relationship is characterized by the preeminence of the right standings of a fair treatment and love unfailing, tenderness and security, continuous self-revelation. Basically, God is revealing his divine truth to us. He is revealing this in faithfulness and in love. Tenderly, he is doing this, or very graciously he's doing this. He says to me that, Clinton, I can show you better than I can tell you. When the husband is about to marry this new bride and the parents is, is giving her away to this husband, they're looking for trusting confidence in that husband's faithfulness that he promised to take care of her and to build her and to strengthen her and look out for her and give her security. God is more faithful than any man. And he is promising by his word to look out for us and take care of us and tenderly love us. He can show us better than he can tell us, but we trust his word, even though we know he's going to fulfill it. He uses in these texts of scriptures that we just read, the earth crying out for, and for, to the heavens and the heavens crying out to God for rain. And the Lord is showing this rain, upon, sending this rain upon the land and bringing fruitfulness. It's a picture of God's love responding to a reversal of punishment and a continuous love as Hosea brought to Gomar and their children. The children's name again was Jezreel, which is Son, our God is Son, um, uh, Lo Rama, which is no mercy, and Lo Lama, Lo Lama, I'm sorry, is not my people and no relationship. And God is reversing all that and bringing it back to a love and to a relationship. Now God reveals this to us in mercy and love. Note, if you could, back in that second chapter, verse 6 through 14, I'm going to skim over that. She had gotten so far away from, or Israel has gotten so away from the Lord as Gomar did from her husband, uh, Jose, uh, um, Jose, um, uh, Hosea. And in those second chapter, verse 6 through 14, she didn't realize that it was God who gave her everything. And she had forgotten that all the green and the wine and the oil and the silver and the gold, all that came from the Lord. But she in turn gave it to Bilal or to the enemy or to Satan or to the devil. She did not worship God with her offerings. God then took it away from her and in turn, he now brings her to the place where he rescues her in the wilderness and brings her back to her and speaks tenderly to her in the wilderness. It's a picture of Romans 8, 28, which I think we shared last week, but we're also bringing it back to now. That everything is working together for the good of them that love God and are called according to, to purpose. She was scattered, but now she's being fruitful. She had no mercy. Now God is showing mercy. She had no relationship. Now God is promising not only a relationship, but to marry her. Watch this forever, forever kind of love. Hosea, the second chapter in verse 20 to 23. Uh, walk in this with me a little bit. I will be faithful to you and make you mine. And you will finally know me as the Lord. God is speaking of his faithfulness. And it's on his part. And he promised to maintain that faithfulness. He promised to be faithful. We promise to be faithful. And as our human nature is, we fall short, but yet we get back up and we continue. But he's saying to us, he never falls short. He is forever faithful. And you will know him as, as the Lord. 
He goes on to talk to us in these texts of scriptures. He says, you will finally know me as Lord. To know him is a Hebrew word that's called yada. It is knowing purposefully, purposefully, or satisfactorily. I know him. I'm not looking for anything else. I have tasted to see the Lord is good, and I don't look for anything else. I know he's the best thing that ever happened to me. To know is to find out. It is to see. It is Yahweh. It is the self-existing one. He is the God and the Lord of the breakthrough. I know his faithfulness. You're going to see my faithfulness, Clinton. David says it in another scripture of Psalms uh, 27 and verse 13. He says, I would have lost heart in the New King James Version, or King James says he would have fainted. Another text says he would not have endured but he says here in Psalms 27 and 13 in the New King James Version, David says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. My hope would have dissipated or completely went away had I not believed or to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You're going to know me, the Lord is saying. And you're going to know that I am faithful and I am consistent and I want to show you my kindness. I think the Ecclesiastes or Lamentations says, every morning, new mercies I see. Every time you get up and you look out and a beautiful thing for the eyes to behold the sun, you see the new mercies of God that you've been breathing all through the night, going through the avenue of sleeping death. But God touches you with grace and me with grace in the morning. And we wake up and it's a new mercies that we see. Paul wants us to understand this kindness of God and knowing him in 2 Corinthians 3 and 5, he says, it is not my sufficiency, but my sufficiency is in God. Or my competence, sufficiency, competence, qualifications, and that does not come from my own ability, it comes from God. He supplies everything we need. Therefore, we gladly love him and serve him and worship him and adore him and praise him because he never fails. The old church would pick up a hymn and mother them would sing it. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth will pass away, but Jesus never, never fails. We don't expect for him to fail, but we want to keep iterating to our spirits and speaking to that negative voice that says God is not going to come through. He never fails. He never fails. It's a beautiful psalm. I might have read it last week. I want to bring it to you again. In Psalm 68, verse 19, um, um, in New Living Translation, it says that we praise God, our Savior, for each day he carries us in his arms. Praise God. Praise God, our Savior, for each day he carries us in his arms. It's a resting psalm, a resting hymn to know that we are safe in his arms. Every day he carries us in his arms. And we're coming to know that. Put in the chat for me tonight, God's got me. God's got me. I am safe in his arms. I think one scripture says we're in his hand. Hand. And no one is able to pluck us or snatch us out of his hands. That Psalms again is 68 in verse 19. He carries us in his arms. Isaiah and Jeremiah, contemporaries, but Jeremiah 24 and 7, he says, I promise to give, uh, give us, promise to give you a heart to know me. And God puts that heart in us by the Holy Spirit that we come to know the Lord. Knowing the Lord, it takes a lifetime to get to know a person, maybe two lifetimes, and you're still trying to figure them out. It takes a lifetime to know a person, and you have to spend time with that person sometimes every day. Um, sometimes you get the signal, sometimes you miss the signal. But to spend time with the Lord is to be in his presence, to get to know him, prayer, reading his word, seeking his face, and seeking his presence. And watch this, life experiences teaches me how to get to know the Lord. Jesus says in Matthew 11, 28, 9, and, 20, and 30, he says, take my yoke or connect with me and learn of me. I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. My yoke is easy and my burdens are light. The yoke, you know that, and we've taught it. If not, it's an animal uh, device that made of wood, and two oxen are connected to it, and they pull and plow the field together. 
the distortion is that with the older ox is pulling in one way and the younger ox is pulling the other, another way, then, then the road becomes crooked and the, the weight becomes strainful. I'm trying to go this way, but the, the young ox is bucking and going that way. So then we're not going to work in harmony. It cannot be like that with the Lord. If I yoke up with him, his yoke is easy. That means that I relax as he leads. I relax as he leads. I may not understand it, but I know he's the Lord of love. He's not going to lead me down a path that's going to destroy me. So I move gently with him. Yoking up with Jesus teaches me that no matter what you're going through, he's there to help me and to pull me along and to help me handle the load as we move through life stepping step by step. Jesus is always there to, in helping, in difficulties. He's partnering with us to know what's best for us and making sure when we turn out of the way, again, he brings us back in alignment. His yoke is easy, easy when you yield to it, and his burdens are light. Being unequally yoked is dangerous. The Bible talks about that in the book of Corinthians. Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers or with people that are negative. You can't not yoke up with people that are negative, that have no positive or no best, so best interest for your life. Disconnect from those things. Break those things, and the anointing will break that thing off your life. But being properly connected is very vital for your success, to walk in harmony, to walk in forward progress. You have to be yoked up like the oxen are with the right person. Harmony in your home, in your relationships, married people, even living single, harmony should be in your home. Everybody can't be in and out of your house, in and out of your space, and leaving those residues of spirits in your atmosphere. And you got to bless your home, pray over it constantly, that peace will be in your home. But yoking in relationship, marital, or just being single, yoking with the right relationship will bring about forward progress in the right direction. You want to make sure that you are connected again with the right person. His yoke is easy and his burdens are, are light. You are my God. They're saying to him, Lord, you are my God. I want to connect with you and declare that you are, are my God. Hosea 2, 20 and 21, as God promises faithfulness in making us his very own, we come to know him as, as Lord. Lord over every circumstance. The Lord is going to answer the cry. Answering our cry means that he will deal with it. He will deal with whatever your heart's cry is, your desire that you need the Lord to step in for you and step into your situation. He's speaking to us in the scripture of Hosea 2 and 21 about the sky pleading for clouds and then the sky will answer the earth with rain. God is getting in the clouds, he's getting in the rain, he's getting in his creation, answering his people. Then the earth, he says in Hosea 2 and 22, he said the earth will answer the thirsty cries of the grain and the grapevines and the olive and the olive trees, and they will turn and they shall turn well, and they shall in turn, and they in turn will answer Jezreel, God's plan. I'm sorry. They will in turn answer. Jezreel. Remember, Jezreel is the scattered seed, but yet now it is God's plants. God has planted it. He scattered it, but he also planted it. So I decree tonight through these verses of scriptures, a prophetic word here, that God is going to increase us in this season. Where the Lord has scattered it, he's going to gather us. He's going to answer the prayers of his people from heaven, and God is going to send the rain and water the earth and release rains and revival the water, the thirsty grains of the grapevines and the olive trees of Jezreel. God is planted and God now is doing new things and bringing new life. My friend, one thing I know about God, when he starts to rain, no one can stop it but him. When God opens up the heavens and begin to pour out rain, no one can stop it but the Lord. Remember the story over in the book of 1 Kings, the 18th chapter, 41, when Elijah said that it would not rain. He said he shut it up and then he opened it back up. He told Ahab, get down. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. God was getting ready to turn up the rain and pour out rain because now it was time for him to show himself as God. Once he stops it, he only can, or starts it, he only controls it. He turns it on and he turns it off. That's the Lord of love. He's sending rain. 
sending refreshing and sending revival. Seasons of blessings are coming to your life. Seasons of outpouring is coming in this season right now. Second Chronicles 7 and 13, you're familiar with that. If the heavens are shut up and there is no rain, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, if they do this, they'll humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, then they will hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins and heal the land. The land is being healed. God is doing something in the desert wilderness of our lives and bringing blessings even to the valleys of dry bones of Ezekiel, prophetically speaking to the area that was dried up. God was doing something even here in our text tonight in the valley of trouble. The door of hope is being opened and God is doing things in dry places and bringing fruitful seasons. I pray increase. I pray expansion. I pray uncommon favor, unstoppable favor over your life this year. I pray it comes in the sound and the refreshing of rain and that is falling from the sky that cannot be stopped. You can see the rain falling. You can't push it back up. Once it starts falling, it's showers of blessings coming into your life and coming into my life. That's from the Lord of love. He says he will do this. I will answer the cry from the clouds and in the rain. God is the great God of Jezreel, and he's doing this for those that have been scattered and bringing us back to him. Let's end this tonight in this 23rd verse of that second chapter. Listen to this as we go. At that time, I will plant a crop of Israelites and raise them for myself. Let me stop right there. When God begins to plant something, man can't stop it. This is not the planting of man. It's the plantings of God. It speaks prophetically of Israel, God's people, but it also speaks of us. And God's raising this thing himself. It's coming through broken and hard-pressed stone ground, but you're coming up. Put in the chat tonight, I'm coming up out of this. God is moving you by himself. He says, as I bring you up out of this, Hosea 2, 23, he says, I'm going to show you my love to those I have called not loved. Some of you tonight may feel that you're altogether unlovely, that nobody cares about you. Nobody wants you around. You don't have any friends. You can't even find a good person to connect with within the church but God loves you and he's going to bring good people into your space. You were called not loved and you were called not my people. But I will say now you are my people and I will, you will reply, you are my God. God is loving us and bringing us back from where we were into this wonderful relationship with him because he is the Lord of love. Not loved, now you're loved. If God loves you, then you ought to love yourself. Appreciate you, celebrate you. Talk good to yourself. Get in the mirror and tell yourself, God loves me, and I'm his child. He has chosen me. He had put me away for a moment of my own rebellion, but he brought me back by love. I decree that God is planting his people in this season. I decree that God is raising us up in this season. I decree that God is showing his love on us in this season. Even in this so-called turbulent world that we're in, God is still showing love to you and I. Oh, check the record. Next time you see the outside and see the rain falling or just look at something that's growing and coming back to life. No matter what it looks like, no matter what you've gone through, the Lord is my God. With that and him on your side, all things are possible and it's going to be beautiful in the end, I decree that my God never fails. He's always coming through. His love is everlasting. His mercy endureth forever. He is my God. He is the Lord of love. God bless you tonight. And may the Lord's grace be upon you. And as he has loved us, then let us love one another. Let us look out for one another and be kind to one another. Because we were all together unlovely and God embraced us. It takes grace and a whole lot of the Holy Spirit to love. That's what God put it in us and showed us how unlovely we were and how without strength we were, but yet he loved us in spite of us. So find the love and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul and mind, because he is the Lord of love. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you real soon.